Thus saith the Lord. <laughs> a lot of people say, Thus saith the Lord, and it's actually not even the Lord. <laughs> it's just an opinion. <laughs> when God speaks, there's spirit, there's life, there's the power of God to bring forth change within that word. When it's just a man speaking, it's just, I don't know, usually for selfish ambition. They want to look good before others, and you just like, whatever. You can't learn from those people because, you know, pride sucks. Pride sucks because it blocks us from hearing God. The very thing that we desire to do was blocked because of pride. <laughs> so, I don't know, how about we just do this thing? Let's just pursue God. I want to just make a quick video about the voice of God. I don't know what I'm going to say yet. <laughs> but one thing I do know is that when you hunger for the voice of God, you're, you are going to hear God. And when the more you hear God, the more it exposes when some, when the enemy comes to you and someone says, Thus saith the Lord to you, and they give you this bogus prophecy. Since you've been with the Lord, you know His voice, and you know that's not His voice. Because the voice of another, you won't follow because you recognize that's not my master's voice. So, the best way to hear the uh, voice of God is to draw near to Him through your heart. Draw near to Him through your soul, your mind, your will, your emotions, your spirit, even your body. We'll say, well, how do you draw near to God with your body? <laughs> the fruit of our lips giving thanks. Use your words. You know, lift your hands in the sanctuary. You know, shout for joy with the voice of triumph. You know, you can scare demons away. I used to go, like, I would feel stuff, I would just go clap my hands. <laughs> I don't know even, I didn't even know any scriptures or anything, I just like, I would clap my hands and it, it's because, you know, demon spirits are like dogs, they just get scared. Because they don't know what you're going to do. You're just, you're full of God. You just scare them, torment them before the time. I think the time is here, so it's good. How do you torment demons? Well, you release the voice of the Lord. The voice of the Lord makes the mountains shake. <laughs> the voice of the Lord shakes the cedars. I don't know. That's a, that's a Psalm 29 or something like that. But uh, yeah, when you hunger and thirst after righteousness, like, man, the Word of God washes us. The Word of God builds us up. The Word of God is like a, it's a structure for us to build our lives upon. Revelation, obviously. Uh, we build our lives upon the rock. It's revelation knowledge of who God is, what He's like, His nature, His essence, His presence, His voice, His the core of His being, who He is, His heart. And if you don't know who God is, then it's going to be really hard to build your life upon the rock because you'll be building it with upon the sand, <laughs> you know, with wood, hay, and stubble, you need to build it with the rocks of revelation that kills giants. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, you're welcome more, even more. Come and fill this video with the substance of Christ to bring forth the transformation in your body, God. This is your body, God. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Our Father in heaven. Hallowed be your name. Let your kingdom come now. Let your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. It's perfectly obeyed. It's perfectly seen. God, give us today our daily bread of your presence. Give us today our daily bread of revelation. Thank you for the bread come down from heaven. We eat your flesh and drink your blood. Covenant Jesus, lover of our soul. Come and fill us up today afresh and anew. We don't want yesterday's manna. We want today fresh and new, God. Hallelujah. What is it? That's what it is. What is it? <laughs> the mysteries, the odds of the Lord. Let it come into our lives now in Jesus' name.
God, if we have anything in our hearts towards any human being, any person, if they just came into our mind right now, we just forgive them in Jesus' name and we just command the blessing of the Lord to smite them with favor with you in the throne room of grace that they come face to face and have a supernatural encounter with you where they can be changed them from glory to glory. Hallelujah. I love the voice of God. I love the voice of my master. When he speaks, his words go right through me. When he speaks to you, his words will go right through you too. First of all, it'll go through your spirit. Then it'll go through your spirit and your soul. <laughs> then it'll go through your spirit, your soul, and you'll even feel it in your body. Then it'll go through your spirit, your soul, and your body and into the atmosphere. And other, other people will experience the voice of the Lord like a mighty rushing river, like a mighty rushing windstorm of life. <laughs> yes. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God, David said. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. He's not the God that just was. <laughs> he's not a dead God. He's a living God. If he's living, that means he exists right here, right now. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of God is within you. And the kingdom of heaven is around you and activated by the glory when you spend time with God, that atmosphere comes through your life. It activates the angels around you and they perform His word in your mouth. <laughs> Hallelujah, man. Shabbat, Shabbat, Shabbat. So just have a drink of the river of life and just be encouraged in your walk with God because it's an eternal walk. I mean, yo, once we translate from here into the kingdom, it's eternal. The Holy Spirit told me personally <coughs> as I looked at a man's hand on, a, on the cover of a CD and then I zoomed into the man's hand. He was wearing a wedding ring. He was a, he was a covenant man. He was in covenant. He was in marriage. And the Holy Spirit filled my room and said, we're going to be together forever because we're in covenant. So give, I give all myself to Holy Spirit Jesus, Father God, and I hope you do too. Whatever area you give your life into God, He fills it because it's His. <laughs> you know, Moses had a little staff and he threw it down because God told him so. He heard the voice of the Lord. He obeyed and became the rod of God and it delivered. It used to guide the sheep, then He delivered an entire nation with it because God's tools are way more powerful when they're his tools in our hands you know we're the hands we're the body of Christ he's the head he gives the decrees he opens the mouth and speaks the word through us and we just follow and we obey and we see good fruit fruit that remains hallelujah holy spirit yeah I love the I love the voice of the Lord I love his presence I love it when he speaks to me in a dream and it's just technicolor. I don't like black and white dreams because those are usually spiritual warfare dreams. But you can still glean wisdom from it by realizing, oh, okay, that's the plans of the enemy. And you just speak the opposite of what the enemy is planning. You decree the word of God and the covenant promises that you have received. You know, if you don't read this book... That's like going to battle with like a, a McDonald's straw and some little pieces of paper and you make a pea shooter. <laughs> the weapons are for warfare are mighty through the pulling down of strongholds, but if there's mighty in the spirit, you know, because Jesus said my words are spirit and they are life. So your words need to be spirit and they need to be life too. Because that's how you can destroy the weapons of death is through the weapons of life. You know, put on the full armor of God. God is life, right? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He's your eternal life. So you're putting on life, and it just freaks death right out. Hallelujah. Oh, let's just get into this a little bit. I don't know what scripture. I just, I just decided I wanted to make a video. Holy Spirit's here. Thank you, Lord. Holy, He'll never leave you or forsake you. You know, if you're ever wondering where where did God go? Where's where's Jesus? Where's the anointing? 
You ever go through that? Like, where, where did God go? I don't understand. Well, uh, I got a scripture for you. Oh, wait. I don't have it on me, I don't think. Song of Solomon. Uh, let's just read this scripture real quick. Song of Solomon 5. I am coming to my garden, my sister, my spouse. I have gathered my myrrh with my spice. I have eaten my honeycomb with my honey. I have drunk my wine with my milk. Eat, O oh friends, drink, yay. <laughs> drink abundantly, O oh beloved. I am coming to my garden. He's usually waiting for you in the garden. <laughs> Where is the Garden of Eden? There's no map for it. Angels block the way because that's a super it's a supernatural place, isn't it? The garden of our heart. You know, there's the earth garden. God waters that through his sons of God. And he also waters it like uh what do you call that? Uh sovereignly through the heavens above, but he waters it through his people. No, fling wide you heavenly gates and the king of glory will come in. Out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. So that rivers of living water is the waters that cover the seas of humanity. You fill the whole earth as, with the knowledge of the glory. Not just revelation knowledge, but manifest knowledge. Like manifest substance with that knowledge pointed to. You, you flood the earth with, with the glory. <laughs> That's why the angels in heaven can say, like, uh, the whole earth is full of the glory, you know? They can see it, because they're, they're very prophetic. They're very spiritual. <laughs> angels are very, very spiritual. But, uh, oh yeah, let's go back to the Solomon thing. Here I am. I am coming to my garden, my sister, my spouse. I have gathered my myrrh with my spice. I have eaten my honeycomb with my honey. I have drunk my wine with my milk eat oh friends drink yeah yay <laughs> drink abundantly oh beloved you can drink of the Lord in the in the garden of your heart Eden is within you you know the the kingdom of God is within you right so go check t look deep inside in the holy of holies and meet with God who's waiting for you oh Father, we just love your presence. I love your peace. I love your voice. God, I just ask for an increase of your voice for everyone who's watching this video or listening to the audio. I ask that you would just go flood through the screen by grace. God, just come and fill their face with heaven. <laughs> come and fill their atmosphere with, Lord, with holy angels from above to guard those gates, that intimacy that you have with your beloved God as we feast on you and you feast on us as we drink your love and you drink ours, God, your holy body. Thank you, Jesus. We belong to you and no devil on, on, on the earth or in heaven or in hell, whatever. <laughs> there's nothing that can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, who is in Eden. <laughs> Hallelujah. He's the tree of life that we feast off of and we live forever. It's His fruit. It's the fruit of His Spirit. We feast off of Him and live. Unless we eat His flesh and drink His blood, there is no life in us. We need to feast on Him. We need to hear the voice of our beloved so we can live. Man doesn't live by bread alone. But he lives from every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. That's a continual relationship. It's not just something that happened like five years ago. Like we need to hear God now, our beloved. As we just lay our, our head on our beloved's chest, we can hear his heartbeat and just come in perfect sync with the rhythm of heaven. The closer we get, the louder his whispers become. The deeper we go, the more unraveling that we see of him and the more that we see of him the more we're changed into the image which we behold so it's good to go from glory to glory and start in the glory and go from glory to glory so God let the anointing come and break the yoke off of your body the mindsets the the limitations that bind us to this world where we're actually where we've actually been truly translated into your world, our home world, God. We've been translated into the kingdom of light to live as spirits. 
and we have a body on the earth to manifest that realm, that reality, that dimension into this realm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for the authority to release your peace. God, I release your spirit in my spirit. I release your peace in my spirit into this place now. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for the principality and the power of peace. You know, blessed are the peacemakers because uh, they, they I think they'll inherit something. <laughs> they'll inherit the earth. Hallelujah. May as well read the Bible since I'm holding it. Shabbat. Uh, and seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. I like how it says he went into the mountain. <laughs> Shabbat. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The poor in spirit means you've sold everything. All you have left is dependence on the Father. Your spiritual substance comes from one, <laughs> comes from God alone. You're poor in the spirit, but you're actually rich because you've sold everything to receive the greatest riches of all, God's friendship, God's love, God's you know, companionship. You get to what not only just his companionship, you get to be married to him. Like that is humbling. So blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. You live out of kingdom, the kingdom of heaven's resources. You depend on him for all your resources. You sold everything just to receive him. Verse 4, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. You know, when you're totally selfless, you mourn for others <laughs> more than for yourself. And the Holy Spirit comes and comforts you with faith words to speak and decree over your family members and your enemies who are clueless to the to the ways of life, to the ways of the holy holiness, you know? And so mourning for them, for me, it's it's been like I would just I would I would bawl my eyes out for people who don't know the presence of God and the voice of God and the person of God and I would there would be claw marks on my carpet and tears and puddles like just calling out to God for God to touch them and to smite them with his peace and his, his anointing to break the the shackles of the devil off of them you know I would just bawl my eyes out God, I give you everything. Take all my musical equipment just to, just for them to be saved. You know, and that's that's mourning for the lost. You know, I think, what does the Bible say about those who sow in tears will uh, reap with joy or something like that? I don't know, whatever. Psalms. Uh, bringing in the sheaves. <laughs> I always wonder what that song was about, but I think it's about that. Anyways, let's keep going with this. I love the, I love the Bible. But I love the person more than the Bible because the person is the one who decreed the Bible as a gateway to step through and back into the purse. The Word of God is a doorway. Remember Jesus said, I am the door? <laughs> Hallelujah. So you can, step, you can step through the Word of God right into the Word of God and He'll present you before the Father. Let's keep reading this. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. That's the humble, I believe. To inherit the earth, some uh, some people want to probably put in there, "Blessed are the meek, for they shall get raptured out of the earth." But that's not what the Bible says. <laughs> blessed are blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Holy Spirit blasted me one day when my wife was drunk in the spirit for three days because we went to a conference, and she was so like she didn't know this stuff existed. And God just hit her hard. She was plastered in the Holy Ghost for three days straight. It didn't lift. It kind of scared me a little bit because I'm like, oh no. Like, how, how are you supposed to go to work? How are you supposed to function in this realm? Who cares? God will work it out. He's the one who's doing it. And uh, we were reading this and it was like, wow. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst after righteousness. Like, even after you've been made righteous. You're still hungering for more of God. You're still thirsting. You never arrive. You just go from glory to glory. Like you went through one realm of glory where there's like angels and seraphim and fire. And you see the glory of heaven and the Father and 
like you're just getting overwhelmed and like and then the Bible says blessed are those who are a hunger and thirst after righteousness like even after you've been made righteous you're standing you're right standing in heaven you're seeing the angels you're seeing all these wonders and these, these glories and you it's brooding right through you but you're still hungry for more because you know the God that you're staring at he go he'll take you from glory to glory like this realm of glory is overwhelming tears laughter everything is on overdrive but the deeper you go into him is the deeper you get to know him more you get to see his mercy on the wicked <laughs> you get to see his mercy even on all of creation he pours out the rain on the just and the unjust his spirit you know and uh, you just want to see him more he's with, without God in heaven heaven would not be heaven it would be darkness it would just be like an abandoned shaft of nothing it's God that makes heaven heaven the light of heaven is the Lamb. So you get to know Him and you'll, you'll get to know what heaven's like. <laughs> how, how else are you supposed to make it on earth as it is in heaven? You, we get filled with, so Christ is fully formed in us and just He's shooting His light outwards. And then you'll be walking on earth like just like it is in heaven where He's King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Everyone just wants to do His will because He's amazing. Most powerful King. In all of creation, well, he created it all for himself. <laughs> Colossians, hallelujah. Let's keep going. Shabba. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Like, okay, yeah, you're th hungry and thirsting, like, after him. But even after you've been made righteous, you're still hungering and thirsting. It's like, it's like a paradox of, like, okay, you've been made righteous, but you're still hungry for more of him. Because you know there's more. <laughs> Draw near to God, he'll draw near to you. Well, how close can you get? Well, he's living in me. Yeah, okay, but uh, how much of his spirit is manifesting through you? How much of his spirit, how much of his ways are your ways? Are you still doing a little bit of your own stuff? How much of the mind of Christ do you flow in daily? Or is it you just tap into like a little word of knowledge every now and then? How about, there's more. There's always more. <laughs> Till you're fully just... It's not even you living anymore, but it's Christ fully living through you. Holy Spirit. Shabbat. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. So mercy, because God's merciful. He was merciful to you, so you can sow mercy to others. It's the way. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Purity in heart comes through a surrendered heart, a thankful heart, a grateful heart. When you're thankful for God, it opens up a pathway for you to receive the goodie bag. <laughs> when you're thankful, to, it's the fruit of your lips giving thanks. And you're glorying in His name. Let's do it right now. Like This is a good exercise that you can do every day. Just pick 10 things that you are truly thankful to God for. And I'm just going to thank God myself in my own way. You can just ignore me for the next 60 seconds and just focus on God. God, we just put our affections on you right now. God, I thank you for the written word that you've given us power and weapons of warfare to destroy all the weapons of the enemy that come against us. God, I thank you for your peace, God. Thank you for your peace to calm the storm and that there's other little ships around me who are in the same storm. So when I have a calm storm in my life, they get the same calmness in their life of the overflow of, of the peace in my life. <laughs> And vice versa, the peace that they receive in their life, the people around them receive the same overflow of the peace that's going into their lives. So we're sowing our talents, and it's multiplying. God, I thank you that, for, that you have redeemed me from the law of sin and death. Thank you for redeeming me from all the wicked things of the world that try to bind me. And you've set me free. It is for freedom that you have set me free, God. I thank you for the written word. I thank you for the speaking your word into my heart and my spirit, my mind, my body, my soul, my every part of my being. Thank you for the ability to hear your voice, God. My sheep hear my voice and they follow me and I give them eternal life. I thank you that I'm your sheep, God. Thank you for opening my eyes to see the real Jesus, God. Thank you for clothes on my back, even the natural things. 
Thank you for the spiritual robes of righteousness and garments of praise, the crown of life, and uh, even the in the sh gospel shoes of peace, the belt buckle of truth, the breastplate of your righteousness, the helmet of your salvation, God, the sword of the Spirit, that we're in a mighty war, and you've equipped us. You've equipped your body. You've not left us as orphans. But we cry, Father, Abba, Father, and your spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the true sons of God. Thank you, Lord, for your principality of peace just brooding through your body, God. Hallelujah. We shall know the truth, and the truth is a person. He sets us free. Thank you for setting us free, God. Thank you for the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you. In the knowledge of you, God, the Father of glory. Thank you for those revelation nuggets to destroy giants and mindsets that come against us. We just cast them all down by the written, by submitting to you and hearing your voice and speaking your voice and casting down those wicked imaginations that exalt itself against the knowledge of God. Because we have true revelation knowledge. Any other voice we will not follow unless it has spirit life in it of our Father. Hallelujah. God, I thank you in Jesus' name for, for technology so we can make these videos and just share your peace, share the kingdom, just share the talents, share the scatter seeds of the kingdom throughout. You know, God gives the increase. Many sow and many water, but you know, God gives the increase. God give the increase to everyone who has the seed of God inside their heart, water with the rivers of living water in the glory realm. Hallelujah. Thank you for that. <laughs> or the honey glory cloud, God. Just making our mouths full of revelation, speaking the mysteries, and destroying all the twisteries. <laughs> speaking the mysteries of the kingdom, bringing the, you know, manifesting the mind of Christ for others to taste and see that God is good and God is, is sweet as honey. Hallelujah. Enlightening the eyes. Thank you, Lord, <laughs> to see past the darkness in Jesus' name, just cutting through it with the light of Christ burning through our hearts. As you just go over the word with us, just let our hearts burn, God, in Jesus' name, and that we recognize you at the breaking of bread and that we will pursue you into the spirit realm. You know, because we no longer know Christ after the flesh. We know Him after the Spirit. Hallelujah. And even though we've been made righteous, we're going to keep hungering and thirsting for more of your righteousness. Deeper levels. <laughs> higher realms of glory. Deeper intimacy. Where no one can pull us out anymore. No distraction of the devil can pull us away from the Lord. Nothing is worth being distracted away from God. Hallelujah. Even Moses had turned had turned aside to see this great sight, and he had a powerful encounter with God. Hallelujah. We want to turn away from all the distractions of the world to God and never be pulled away from the distractions of the world from God. We always want to be going from glory to glory, closer to closer to God in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Shabbat. Uh, where, where were we here? Okay, Shabbat. Oh, yeah. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. That comes by spending time in the manifest presence of God. When everyone else is gone and left and the presence is still there, don't leave. Stay there. What's more important? Hallelujah. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. The peacemakers. Hallelujah. You know that God... His first nature in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Well, this just says that we're the peacemakers. You can create realms of peace through your words. You can create uh, strife and contention with your words. But in the image of God, you can create peace. You, you can create atmospheres of peace just by decreeing the truths of God. And the angels come and they just, when they, when that spiritual substance of the glory and the presence of God is on those words, they will, they will, they, they do something, man. <laughs> Psalm 103, hold on. Hallelujah. They perform his word or something like that. I can't remember the scripture right now. 
This is actually this whole psalm is full of sauce. Let's go through that. We'll come back to Matthew in a bit. Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Why? Bless the Lord, O my soul. Why not my spirit? Because your soul is a magnifier. If you bless the Lord with your soul, which is your mind, your will, and your emotions, you magnify who the Lord is, and what you magnify gets magnified around your life. <laughs> bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless His holy name. Because if you want the blessings of the Lord around you, bless Him. Thank Him. Praise Him. Worship Him. And He will just... When you talk about God, He shows up. <laughs> When you talk about angels, they show up. When you talk about evil things, what shows up? Hallelujah. Talk about, that's why Paul said, set your affections on things above, not on things of the earth, or meditate on these things, whatsoever is pure, whatsoever is peaceable, you know. Meditate on those things. Because those things manifest around your life. Don't decree what the enemy is doing. Decree what God is doing, and you'll enjoy the fruit that follows. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all His benefits. Actually, when you do bless the Lord, you remember His benefits easily. Hallelujah. Shabba. And then you can shake the principalities and the powers out of the air that are lying to you. You can shake the lying spirits out of the air, the unpeaceable spirits out of the air through the Prince of Peace. Who forgiveth, is the King James, who forgives all your iniquities and heals all your diseases. Hallelujah. He's our healer. He's our forgiver. <laughs> yes, thank you for healing all, God. Thank you for healing us. Thank you for forgiving us and bringing us into higher realms of life. The highest realm of life is just living in God's heart. You know, He's the way, the truth, and the life. His life is life more abundantly. And out of your heart will flow the issues of His life if you've given your heart to Him. Who redeems my life from destruction. Who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. He crowns you with His kindness. And He crowns us with His tender mercies. So that everyone can look around and say, Wow! If God can forgive this idiot, He can forgive me too. <laughs> and trust me, man, I was I was a wicked man before I met the Lord. We were all wicked. No matter the most deceiving wickedness is religious pride. That was like one of the greatest things that came against Jesus and hit when He walked the earth. They were the most wicked people. Jesus called them the sons of the devil. Religious pride is filth. That's why it's easy just to stay humble and teachable like a child. And you can enter into the kingdom of heaven. Unless you become like a child, you can't even enter into the kingdom of heaven. You have to have you fully trusting and fully yielded to your Father who is in heaven. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, and I'm still growing. I haven't arrived anywhere. I'll, I'll never arrive. I'm always going to be walking with God in the cool of the day until we go from glory to glory, even the highest way of glory. And yet... If you have all the gifts, all the mysteries, all the, like, everything. Yet there's still a better way, the love. It's His love. It's where you could stare at people who want to murder you, and the love of God just pours out of your heart as they curse you and torture you, torture your loved ones. Now that <laughs> is great. And that is being changed into His, that's His greatness. Nothing to do with you. You die to yourself and yield to Him. And let His life flow through you. You know, our righteousness is as filthy rags. Go ahead, try to be righteous on your own. Try to stop sitting. <laughs> the Bible says, put to death the deeds of the flesh by the Spirit of God in Romans 8. Even, we can't even stop sitting without Holy Spirit's help. Yeah, put it to death. How do you how do you stay though above that? You walk with God. You walk with God, and then when that temptation comes to try to pull you, like pfft, I'm gonna leave the glory for that. No, <laughs> I'm not gonna leave this peace and this anointing and the glory and the presence of God for this little this uh, tiny bit of earth pleasure that's just gonna invite torment and demons into my life. 
Not a good deal, Satan. Screw off in Jesus' name. Your deals suck. <laughs> God's deals are amazing, man. It's like, you, you give him your life, you get his life. And he, his life is way better than yours. <laughs> you give him uh, your desires, he gives you his desires, which are infinitely better. Hallelujah. You give him your words, he gives you his words. Rhema, revelation, sauce-filled words that just fill the atmosphere with glory. Way better deal. That's covenant trading with God. You give him your heart, you get his heart. Hallelujah. You give him your body, you become the body of Christ and manifest glory. It comes through that body because it's no longer you living, it's him living through you. And God is mega glory. <laughs> Hallelujah, man. I haven't got to the angel part yet. Let's keep going. He redeems my life from destruction and crowns me with loving kindness and tender mercies. Who satisfies my mouth with good things. That's that living word coming through your mouth. A double-edged sword, which is your, you're speaking his words spiritually out of your mouth. Shabbat. Who satisfies my mouth with good things so that... Uh, Thy youth is renewed like the eagles. <laughs> Hallelujah. I think that's where they pluck all their feathers off or something like that. They get all their new feathers. I don't know. I don't want to shove. Here we go. Oh yeah, here we go. The Lord executeth righteousness and judgment for all the oppressed. So you should too. When you see someone walking in darkness and filth, like especially religious pride, <laughs> that's the strongest thing I see. Like I, I could, you know, rebellious people who are just into doing their own thing, just living like they're not Christians or anything. That's fine. They're just being who they are. But like a Christian who is just like manifesting all these demons, that should not be that way, man. That should not be that way. You just need to die. You need to die, be crucified with Christ, and let Him raise you from the dead into heavenly places in Christ. And then you'll live out of that heavenly place in Christ and manifest that realm for other people around you to see, you know, because you'll be seeing. You know, it's not lot. It's not the blind leading the blind. You're following your master who sees, <laughs> who is your vision, and you follow what he's doing, and you say what he's saying, and that brings forth life. And that's way better than that spiritual pride. Pride is basically dependence upon your your soulish self or your natural self apart from God. And uh, humility is full dependence on the Holy Spirit. That's why Moses could write down and say that I'm. And Moses was the most humble man on the earth because he had to depend on the Holy Spirit with all those people bickering and complaining around him. He needed the Holy Spirit to teach him. To, te yeah, teach him what to teach the people and to, you know, to lead them. You know, if you're going to lead people, you have to be a follower. The greatest leaders are followers. Even Jesus, when he walked the earth, he said, like, I don't do the works. It's the Father that does the works. You know, he followed, he did everything that his father told him to do and said everything that his father told him to say. So it wasn't, you know, the greatest leaders are the greatest followers of light, the kingdom of light, God. You know, he's the father of lights. All right, Bible. People get all weird, like, oh, it's New Age. No, it's like actually in the Bible. He's the father of lights, father of glory, you know, Ephesians. Hallelujah. Shabba. Anyways. Jesus is God. There you go. <laughs> we, lost, we might have lost a couple Jehovah's Witnesses there. <laughs> I'm not here to please, man. I could care less your opinion. If your opinion is in alignment, is not in alignment with God, God's spiritual words, then it's just irrelevant. Same with me. If my opinions and my words are not in alignment with what, you know, the Spirit of God has said and is saying, my words are just irrelevant. They'll fall to the ground. But if what I say is truly Spirit of life, then they will bear fruit, you know, 30-fold, 160-fold, or 100-fold. You discern people's words by the Spirit of God or by a filthy spirit. You know, the other guys, the other team. <laughs> 
And what is the fruit of it? Check out Galatians 5. If you don't know what the fruit of the Spirit is, you can read it there. And the fruit of uh, the Antichrist. The fruit of... Uh, um, <laughs> I feel a lot of I feel a lot of peace right now, man. Hallelujah, man. God puts me in a good mood. Hallelujah, Shaba. Let's. I want to finish this. I haven't got to the angels yet, man. I have to go back to Matthew too. I haven't finished that one yet, but I'm getting excited about the fruit of the spirit. Let's just read it real quick, and then we'll go back to the Psalms, and we'll go back to Matthew. Okay. Uh, Galatians chapter five talks about the fruit of the spirit. How do you discern whether someone's Words are of God or of the flesh or of the devil or of themselves by the Spirit. Here's how you discern. Shabbat. Okay. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other. So that you cannot do the things that you would. Okay, here it is. But if you be led of the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh. Okay, here's, here's how you can judge the fruit or discern the fruit, where it's coming from. This is the fruit of the demon. Here we go. Ready? Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery. That's not just like a man sleeping with a woman. Yes, adultery. But how about adultery against God? Bowing down to statues and giving them change, you know. You're worshiping idols. What about idols in your own life? I speak this over myself too. Is there any idols in my life, God? I just burn them up and they're yours. Destroy them in the name of Jesus. I give you full permission to destroy every single idol in my life that is not of you, God. You're my idol, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, we have American Idol. I have like a, a heavenly idol, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Fornication. Now that's that's filthiness. That's sleeping with. If you're sleeping with somebody outside of marriage, or you're doing sexual things with somebody else and you're not married, that's called fornication. That's a work of the flesh. And if you do those things, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. So it's best just to repent, get into the glory, and you know ask God for a wife or a husband, and don't go out and just grab anything that walks because that's covenant. You're gonna be with that person for the rest of your life on the earth and you can have hell on earth or you can have heaven on earth if you do it God's way or the enemy's way you know if you do it God's way you'll have heaven on earth if you do it the enemy's way you'll have hell on earth and it's worth it just to do it God's way Yahweh hallelujah uncleanness you know unclean spirits they're called unclean spirits for a reason they come through people's people carry them all over the place but you carry uh, the power to cast those things off of them if they want to change <laughs> you know hallelujah fill them with peace show manifest the kingdom and let them know the better way which is you know the way the truth of life Christ alone hope of glory uncleanness lasciviousness idolatry witchcraft witchcraft can be like Christian witchcraft as well whereas you you're just word cursing all your brothers and sisters you think you're better than them you're trying to control them because you want to tithe on an offering, you want their money. What are your motives? If your motives for having a church is money and to keep the keep the machine running, you're you're in idolatry. Your motive is supposed to be to build up the body of Christ so that Christ is formed in them and releasing the kidding the the kingdom uh, goodie bag. You know, it's not to lord over people and take their money. That's demonic. That would be. Uh, Idolatry, witchcraft, and hatred and variance. The whole purpose of the fivefold is to have Christ, let them grow up into their head. Christ, hope of glory. And, uh, you know, if the fathers or whatever, uh, how are you going to go there? Check it out. Emulations, wrath, strife, strife. You know what that is? Debating. Go on Facebook or on YouTube and every, the people are fighting back and forth over doctrines and uh, seditions and heresies. They're fighting back. These are the fruits of the flesh. That's why I, I've gotten caught in this before, man. I know what it's like to enter into I get tricked into it, you know. People just want to debate and strive with me over the scriptures because they see something in me that they don't agree with. 
And if they come to me in true humility, I will discern it. Like, I'll like, wow, okay, well, there's the Spirit of God's on that. Oh, you're right. Thank you. Thank you. Like, build a relationship with me. It seems like the most people that show up on my Facebook uh, with strives and contentions, they never show up on any of my other posts. It's just when they have, like, something... Uh, they have a disagreement they want to fight with me and they, that I'm wrong and then they get all mad and manifest their demons on me and then they block me I'm like well where were you when I was like just we were all making these uh, you know posts in the glory we're all happy and there's a lot of joy of the Lord and we're <laughs> we're all blissed out in the kingdom it wasn't word and holy but it was righteousness joy and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost you know where were you how come you only showed up when you want when there's strife and heresies and it's all coming through you you're trying to bind me with the scriptures, man. <laughs> the scriptures are here to set us free. Not to bind in shackles and chains to your religion. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool, man. I have nothing in my heart against anyone. Check my heart, God, if there's anything against anyone. Put them in before me right now. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I don't see anybody. So I'll just wash over everyone who's ever had a striping opinion on my Facebook God where they just had to be right they had to have their 50 50 posts to prove and back up what they say is true <laughs> holla just speak the truth let your yes be yes and your no be no anything else is evil <laughs> did somebody say that in the Bible I don't know <laughs> glory to God anyways envies murders ISIS <laughs> You know? Murderers. Listen to this. If you hate your brother, you're a murderer. That's the Bible. Well, so they did this to me. You know, even if you've been raped, if you've been, you know, the most horrible things done to you. Jesus said, love your enemies. Forgive those who have trespassed against you and you'll also be forgiven, you know? How do you forgive? How, what the heck? How? You don't understand. Well, I don't think you understand the price that Jesus paid for you. You've been forgiven. If you don't forgive them, how do you expect to be forgiven? You receive forgiveness as a free gift. So give them forgiveness freely. Even though they've sinned against you, just give it to God. Give everything to God. Because that bitterness is actually eating away at your heart. And it's putting stress on you. Forgive them so you can be free. Since you've been freed from, you know, all your sins by Jesus, you can forgive these people as well. Yeah, God, if there's any unforgiveness in my heart towards anybody, I just release grace over them right now. Forgive them, God, and forgive me for holding anything in my heart towards anybody, any human being. I release it all to you, and I nail it all to the cross, and I plead the blood of Jesus on my life and on them in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, God, fill them with an atmosphere of glory and peace. Smite them with the spirit of wisdom and revelation of the knowledge of you so they can see the real Jesus and open their eyes to see Jesus and let the salvation just flood through their home, flood through their very being. God, open their eyes to see Jesus because I want to see them in heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. Envyings, murders, drunkenness. Are you addicted to alcohol? I was. Even after I became a Christian, I, I, I quit drinking for the longest time and then I saw other people like, oh yeah, you know, you're just being religious, man. I can have a drink. So then I would go out and I'd buy, you know, I would drink a glass of wine and uh, I'd be fine. And then I'd wake up and i feel kind of like filth on my back. And then I would just do it again and then I would, well, what the heck is this? What, how come these people can drink wine and I can't? So then I'd start, I'd be wrestling this demon of religion. I'll freaking drink three bottles. You know, I get hammered, wake up and puke and I just gave up trying to like prove myself or to fight this. I just, I can't. God, for me, for some reason, I can't drink alcohol because all I get, my, my personality is too extreme. If I'm going out for God, we'll go out for God. If we're going to go test this alcohol realm, I'll test the alcohol realm and I'll just, I'll drink three bottles and block out and just not even know. So I, I can't drink alcohol. Because it produces drunkenness, which leads to, uh, Shabba, what is it? You need to be sober mind, which is drunk in the spirit. 
You need to be filled with the Spirit, not alcohol. Don't get your pleasure from the natural alcohol. Get all your pleasure from, you know, God has a river called pleasure. Drink of Him. Drink of His Spirit. And all those desires fall off. And when they try to come back to you, they're actually, you realize they're demon spirits. It's an alcoholism spirit that comes back to you. It says a familiar spirit. And you need to break it off of your life. Just go through your generation of lines. Everywhere there was an alcoholic addiction, just break it off your ancestors and get deliverance, whatever. You know, cast down every wicked imagination. Oh, I'm going to feel good today. Oh, I'm feeling stressful. I feel stressed out. I need to have a glass of wine. Yeah, well, what, what glass of wine can turn into a bottle? Listen, there's no condemnation. If you drink alcohol, then, you know, and you could, you have the freedom to do so. I don't. For some reason, I, I, I don't know. There's, there's something weird about it, man. And I don't smoke pot either. So all you wonder, like, I'll go like this. I'm token the ghost. I'm just receiving the Ruach. Jesus breathes on his disciples and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. I'm smoking the tree of life leaves, man. Sometimes, that, that, this offends people. I don't know why. You're just receiving God. You know, who is the air? This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence living in me. We sing songs about it, but as soon as someone just does this, they, everyone gets offended and they unblock, they block you and they unfriend you, whatever. You know, it's the same thing. I do barrels. Like, I drink from the river of life. Oh, if anyone's thirsty, let them come to the river and drink. Isaiah 55. Well, where do you get this cup to drink from? How do you drink the river of life? Some people just open their hearts, lift their hands, and they just drink the river of life through their heart. Some people just do stuff like this. Toke the ghost. And you, I, I tested this. Because the person who taught me this was, he was very sketchy, man. <laughs> I was like, man, is this God? How come I feel the glory and the presence of God coming off this dude? But they look so sketchy, you know? As everything in my natural fallen nature wants to rise up and judge them. But I test it. I'm like, okay, God, if this is you, you gotta show me. I'm gonna I'm gonna toke the ghost. And I wanna like I got I just gotta know if this is you because like my friends are doing this and this is this is weird to me. I mean I've done barrels, well you know, take the barrel and you drink from the <laughs> from the river of life. And this is new to me, so I, I just I went like this. God, I smoke you, <laughs> man. The presence of God, I mean, the anointing, just whoa, flooded my car. I was like, oh my gosh, God, you are into that? Yes, God is into that. You know why? Because it destroys the religious spirit. You do this, and religious pe like people, like a lot of people don't understand. That's fine. They need to live because they live out of their soul. They don't live by the spirit, what the spirit of God is saying, and they just like, oh, that's demonic. That's drugs and blah. You know, like where's the drug? I'm not holding any drugs. I'm just saying something simple. I'm like, I'm receiving you, God. I want, you, I want to be intoxicated on your love. So I, I receive your love right now in Jesus' name. And it just flooded my soul, flooded my spirit, and my flesh cried out for the living God and received it, received Him. And so after that, I was like, I was walking through like the mall, just, whoa, <laughs> just taking hits of God, like, man, I, can, I can't believe this was hidden from me. You know, I can, I can sit in the manifest presence of God anytime, any day, I want, just, I can just do it by faith. You know, you gotta connect your heart to it. Like, it was, I wasn't sure at first, but I was like, I want more of you, God. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care if I have to put on, you know, a, like John the Baptist, like eat locusts and wild honey and put on a, a, a inside out goat skins or whatever. I don't care what I look on, like on the outside. It's the spiritual life on the inside that counts. It's not what goes into, it's like what comes out of the heart. And what's coming out of the heart as I do this from a lot of people around me is judgmental spirit the accuser of the brethren and it's really strange it was, you know yeah it's kind of strange but it's a God thing and it shocked really literally that judgmental spirit right out of me 
And uh, it, I would do that walking through the mall. When I'm going grocery shopping, I'm just, well, I'm feeling a lot of whack on that right now. <laughs> I would just toke the gun. Oh, Lord. <laughs> I could do it anywhere. Hallelujah. And the angels would start just manifesting around me. And there would just be like an open heaven. The more I would just toke the gun. I thank you, Holy Spirit. <laughs> wow. Thank you for the peace of God that passes all my understanding in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. It was just like the barrels. Like, people don't like that. Like, that's alcohol. God doesn't support drunkenness. <laughs> that's right. Don't be drunk in the spirit. Like, don't be drunk with alcohol, but be drunk in the spirit. You know what it means to be drunk? You're just totally... I, I read uh, Psalm... I uh, not Psalm. Holy Spirit. <laughs> now I'm feeling a lot of peace right now. In the Song of Solomon. It says, uh, drink and drink and drink so you can take no more. In the Passion Translation, just drink of his love. So you become intoxicated by the love of God. That's all it is. That's what it is. It's, it's the vineyards of your, if the, if the garden of Eden within you, you're just feasting on him, your lover. And you get intoxicated by his love and it's pure armor. And the opinions of man don't even matter. Hallelujah, because the glory and the presence of God is manifesting through through you and to you. I, I'm going to feel a lot of glory right now. <laughs> wow, just take it. Just talk the Holy Spirit, man. He, he, you know what? God, I love you. I, t I just talk you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I just receive you into my very being, God. My natural mind may not understand. But that's okay, because my heart, my spirit understand. <laughs> you know, draw near to God, He will draw near to you. The things of the spirit are foolishness to those who are walking in the flesh. So just walk in the spirit. Don't have to get uh, offended or anything. Did you know that the Bible says those who delight in your law or something like that, they, they are never offended? Here, let's go to Psalms. We're going back to Psalms. I didn't read the good fruits of the Spirit, so we got to go back to the good fruits of the Spirit, and we'll go back to the Psalms, and then we'll go back to Matthew. But after this, I want to read that. I want to read Psalms. Psalm 119. I need some more bookmarkers, man. Psalm 119. I just told you I don't do drugs, so. Hallelujah. I live, I live by the word that proceeds from the mouth of God. That river of life. That's where my life comes from. Everything else is just irrelevant to me. I think it's 119 verse 165. Let's read it. Let's read what the Bible says about getting offended. <laughs> it's okay. Psalm 119 verse 165 says, Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. That's the law of the Spirit in Christ Jesus. Great peace have they which love thy law. I love the law of the Spirit. It is for freedom that Christ has set me free. Hallelujah. And nothing shall offend them. <laughs> When you love the law of God, you realize that all the other laws have to sub submit to His law. And we're going to get into the fruit of the Spirit right here. Because against such, there is no law. Alright? So I read, I read to you the fruits of the flesh. You know, drunkenness on alcohol. That's flesh. Hallelujah. So get off the alcohol demon. Yeah, just get into God. Drink His presence and all those false gods, all those idols will fall off of you. Lesser lovers will die in his presence. Shabbat. Here we go. Uh, but the fruit of this... Okay, hold on. Envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and, and such like. And the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not, say not, they shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So get those idols out of your life. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. Hallelujah. I love His love, man.
God, I asked, I asked, once asked God, I said, what's, what's the purpose of life? I didn't expect him to answer me, but he said, love. Because you can have all the money in the world, but without love, it's worthless. It's spent on vanity. You can have all the knowledge in the world, but without love, it's, you're just a no noisy gong and a tinkling cymbal. You're like a really bad drummer trying to do a drum solo. Love is everything. God is love. Joy. That's the fruit of the spirit, man. I'm not talking about just someone making a joke, like making a joke, and you laugh about it. That's fine, whatever. <laughs> the joy of the Lord, which is your strength to stand against all the fiery darts of the enemy. Now that's good fruit. <laughs> peace. He's the principality and power of the air. He's your peace. You walk in His peace. It's those gospel shoes in peace. You can walk with God. And walk in God, and God walks in you. You can walk in the peace every day. How much? What's how? How much? Your level of hunger for God is the level of peace that you'll walk in. Because if you're hungry for only God, you won't fill yourselves with lesser lovers. Long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. You're hearing the Spirit. That's where faith comes from doesn't come from just reading the Bible. It comes from reading the Bible with the mind of Christ. <laughs> Hallelujah. Against, oh yeah, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. So you cannot be bound by the laws of man or anything, all these things, if you're walking in the true fruit of the Holy Spirit. It's the fruit of the Spirit. So walk in the Spirit. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Just don't stand still unless you're just like you're trying to receive from the Lord or something and you want to still your, be still and know that He is God. That's fine. But you can be still and know that He's God while you're walking down the sidewalk as well. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's get back to the angel, what they do in Psalm 103. Sorry it took a long time. I got on a lot of rabbit trails, man. Psalm 103. Let's go to verse 8. The Lord is merciful. Actually, no, let's go back to 5. Who satisfies thy mouth with good things so that your youth, your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all the oppressed. So you need to exercise that as well because that's the way. He made known his ways unto Moses and his acts to the children of Israel. You need to know the ways of God by spending time in Yahweh. <laughs> the manifest glory is that's where you learn. You learn by the Spirit. Not intellectually, because that's what Pharisees do. They memorize the Bible. You learn by the Spirit. And then those scriptures became, become Spirit and life. Here we go. Okay, he may know his ways unto Moses and acts of the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger. So you can tell those Pharisees when they get mad and condemn you with scriptures, they're quick to anger. <laughs> That's okay. Don't step into that spirit. You're of, you're walking in a different spirit. You're walking in the fruit of the spirit. So you don't have to give in to all those other outwardly things. Because you're living from the inside out. The kingdom of God within you is your life. The Lord is uh, merciful and gracious, slow to anger, plenteous in mercy. He will not always chide, neither will he uh, keep his anger forever. He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. Yes, he's merciful, man. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his t mercy towards them that fear him. That's the fear of the Lord, the spirit of the fear of the Lord. It's, it feels good. It's, it brings an awe and a wonder at the, the goodness and the mercy of God. I made a video, the video just behind this video, that talks about... Uh, the spirit of the fear of the Lord. When I had an open vision and a reoccurring dream, it's awesome. It's wonderful. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. For he knoweth our frame, he remembereth that we are dust. For at as for man, his days are as grass. As a flower of the field, so he flourisheth. The wind passeth over it, and it is gone. And the place thereof shall know it no more. 
But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that which fear Him, and His righteousness unto the children's children, to such as keep His covenant, to those that remember His commandments to do them. The Lord hath prepared His throne in the heavens, and His kingdom ruleth over all. Bless, okay, here it is, you ready? Bless the Lord, ye His angels, that excel in strength, that do His commandments, hearkening unto the voice of His Word. So the angels perform the voice of His Word. When the Lord speaks to you through a vision, a dream, a revelation, a scripture, when go, oh, there's a lot of glory in my house right now. <laughs> Shabbat. When the Lord... <laughs> when the Lord... <laughs> Shabbat Shabbat Kaleh. Okay. Hey. <laughs> Holy. Wow. Thank you, Lord, for the angels. Hallelujah. <laughs> when the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's read this again. Bless the Lord, ye his angels that excel in strength, <laughs> that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. They hearken unto the voice of His word and they do His commandments. Hallelujah. They perform His word. Whoa, I just looked at the clock. It was like 10555. There's a lot of grace on this video for your breakthrough. God just released the warring angels and the ministering angels and the spirits of fire to perform your word in their lives. That they are more than conquerors. <laughs> they are overcomers in Christ. Hallelujah. Shabbat. Bless ye the Lord.